I believe citizens should be free to speak their mind without fear, to organize and to criticize their government. And yes, I believe voters should be able to choose their governments in free and democratic elections. Not everybody agrees with me on this. Not everybody agrees with the American people on this, but I believe those human rights are universal. President Obama yesterday, his last day in Cuba, they're stressing the importance of democratic freedom. But that message may have been offered in vain because, after all, that island nation remains under the communist stronghold of the uh, stranglehold of the Castro brothers. What about this, this trip by the president to Cuba? Are we right to be skeptical of it? Why put so much energy into trying to reconcile with that Marxist nation? Asking those questions, maybe getting some answers now as we're joined on the anchor desk by the executive director of Cuban Democracy Associates and the editor of Capitol Hill Cubans, a great blog, Mauricio Kleber Caron. Mauricio, really appreciate your time tonight oh, on you. Newsmax Prime. Thank you for having me. The president. Some would say just getting up and saying that in front of the Castros makes a difference. Yeah. Do you believe that's true? Well, I think the whole trip was a mistake for geopolitical reasons. Remember, this is the first time that a U.S. president visited a Latin American dictatorship since LBJ went to visit Somoza in Nicaragua in 1968. So it sends a wrong message. Compare that, for example, to Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, in 1982, when he traveled to Latin America, he went to Honduras to celebrate the first constitutional election of Dr. Roberto Suazo Cordova, who was elected after decades of military dictatorship. And that began the trend of democratization in the hemisphere. Now Obama, who's only been to five or six countries in Latin America, has chosen the anomaly there's 34 democracies in the Western Hemisphere and has chosen the anomaly. So I think that is a mistake. Now, in regards to the trip in itself and what he spoke, he had a couple of good moments. But the problem was that then, I, I say his staff and perhaps himself, uh, sh sh really messed it all up. Uh, for example, when they caught Raul Castro off guard and he, didn't, and, he, and, and he couldn't answer the question about political prisoners and then he stumbled all over himself and said, well, you know what, name the political prisoners and I'll release them by the end of the day. Well, it would have been a great Reagan moment for Obama then to come up and say, hey, here's a list of 87 political prisoners, and we look forward to having them. That's a great thing. We look forward to having them free by tomorrow morning. But instead, Ben Rhodes, the president's deputy national security advisor, started giving excuses for why the regime has them in prison, that they consider their violations of criminal law, etc. In other words, he almost became, he started parroting what the regime's so, excuses would be. Just an apologist, really, for the regime. And, and when you look at the facial expressions of the president down there, he seemed to be absolutely delighted to be in the company of Raul Castro. Does he just have a soft spot for, there's no other way to sugarcoat it, for anti-American uh, uh, regimes around the world? Well, I think in, in the, the messaging is important. And I think that obviously someone with such bloodied hands as Raul Castro, and that's something people don't talk about. They like to talk about him as some type of reformer, but he was the chief executioner of this regime. He has tens of thousands of lives in his hands from the 60s in executions and the 80s and 90s of the purgings, and of very prominent pro-democracy leaders like Osvaldo Paya, uh, the head of the Varela Project, who was murdered in 2012 under Raul Castro's regime. And now, you know, President Obama was doing the wave uh, at, at, this, at the stadium, at the baseball stadium with Raul Castro. I think that was particularly tasteless. I'll tell you what else was tasteless about that baseball game. They invited, the White House invited the FARC, the Colombian narco-terrorist group, uh, which is in Havana negotiating with the Colombian government, to participate, to join them at that baseball game. So while there was a terrorist attack in Brussels, there were the, the second largest terrorist group in the world, the FARC, was enjoying the baseball game with President Obama and Cuban dictator Raul Castro in Havana. I think that was also particularly tasteless. And you see, yesterday, uh, in, in offering a reaction, the president spent less than a minute talking about the terror attacks in Brussels. There were a lot of concerning moments, but I think especially, as you pointed out, if we just would have had that list in his pocket, to hand right there to Raul Castro made all the difference. That in the would world. have been the Reagan moment that they thought this was going to be a tear down the wall moment, and that would have been the moment. Instead, Ben Rhodes started almost apologizing yeah. for it. Unfortunately, I have to apologize to you because we're out of time. Mauricio, thank you for your insights. Love the name of that blog, Capitol Hill Cubans. There is much more ahead, so stay tuned. Our political panel is next on Newsmax Prime.